Hello everyone, I'm Dr Melanie Windridge, Communications Consultant at Tokamak Energy and UK Director of the Fusion Industry Association. It's Friday the 19th of June and here is your Fusion News update. Stories today include 1. Why cracking nuclear fusion will depend on artificial intelligence. 2. A new way to study how elements mix deep inside giant planets. 3. Congress boosts inertial confinement fusion budget. 4. These tiny neutron generators could pave the way for fusion. And I've got some bonuses as usual. 1. Why cracking nuclear fusion will depend on artificial intelligence. Abigail Beale writes in a feature for New Scientist that the promise of clean green fusion has been touted for decades, but the rise of AI means the challenges could finally be overcome. After going through some of the history, Beale states how improved computational power has improved plasma modelling, helping researchers understand plasma behaviour and find optimum designs of fusion devices. Artificial intelligence can give us much greater speed and a much deeper exploration of the range of possibilities, says Professor Bhattacharjee at Princeton University. Calculations that used to take months can now be performed in hours, all down to AI's ability to recognise patterns and make predictions of future behaviour. Beale goes on to say how TAE Technologies is working with Google's DeepMind and General Fusion is working with Microsoft, but also that AI will be a boost for ETA. Various other private fusion companies also get a mention in this article, including Commonwealth Fusion Systems, First Light Fusion and Tokamak Energy. 2. A new way to study how elements mix deep inside giant planets. An international team that includes scientists from the Department of Energy's SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory has developed a new experimental setup to measure how chemical elements behave and mix deep inside icy giant planets like Jupiter and Saturn. This could offer insights into the formation and evolution of planetary systems, but also guide scientists researching fusion energy using inertial confinement. The research provides data on a phenomenon that is very difficult to model computationally, that is the missability of two elements, or how they combine when mixed. Here they see how two elements separate, like getting mayonnaise to separate into oil and vinegar. Mike Dunn, the director of SLAC's LINAC Coherent Light Source X-ray Laser, said, What they learn could offer insight into a key way fusion fails, in which the inert shell of a capsule mixes in with the fusion fuel and contaminates it so that it doesn't burn. The researchers hope the technique will allow them to measure the microscopic mix of materials at large, high-power lasers such as the National Ignition Facility. And also on the subject of laser fusion. 3. Congress boosts inertial confinement fusion budget. There is a story in Laser Focus World about a budget increase for NIF, the National Ignition Facility. In the fiscal 2020 budget, the US Inertial Confinement Fusion Program emerged with an overall budget increase of $565 million, a 5% increase from the $545 million in fiscal 2019. By year's end, the panel is to chart plans for a five-year program to increase NIF's pulse energy and perform new experiments to either ignite a fusion plasma or pin down the conditions needed for ignition. 4. These tiny neutron generators could pave the way for fusion. Popular Mechanics has an article about an affiliate member of the FIA, Phoenix, a company that makes small neutron generators. Making plentiful neutrons is important for medicine, manufacturing and more because they can be used to see inside matter. Neutron imaging is a form of radiography, like an X-ray, but better for certain applications. Phoenix is building small reactors that can revolutionise medical imaging, munition scanning and even non-destructive testing for quality assurance. Hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, are collided in a metre-long particle accelerator where they fuse and are harvested from a constantly replenished supply of reactive gas. They are doing fusion, but they have to put a lot of energy in to get this to happen. But in the longer term, the scientists say that training people to run neutron generators helps with familiarisation and will speed up the future of fusion energy. Phoenix's president, Evan Stengbush, said the sooner we can get fusion technologies to be utilised regularly in mainstream commercial applications, the sooner we'll be able to take the technology to the next level for the production of clean and abundant fusion energy. And we have a few bonuses this week. Fusion was recently featured in the BP Technology Outlook podcast. Contributors included David Kingham from Tokamak Energy, Sir Stephen Cowley from Princeton, Mark Henderson from ETA and Nick Hawker from First Light Fusion. You can listen on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts via the link in the description below. 
And next, there is an MIT technology review entitled How the US Lost Its Way on Innovation. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, the author calls for a refocusing of the funding system to not just fund research, but to fund solutions, one of these being fusion. For every dollar the US spends on biological and medical research, a mere 15 cents go into research in chemistry and physics, despite the enormous potential for breakthroughs in carbon capture, energy storage, or fusion energy. And there's more news on the construction of ITER from various sources across the world. Head to the ITER website if you want to see the latest pictures of the construction. There's also a brief history of fusion in nature physics, looking particularly at international collaboration and how the IAEA has shaped the field. And there's an article in Nautilus about Michael Binderbauer and TAE Technologies. So that's all from Fusion News this week. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want further Fusion News updates and check out the links in the description below for further information. Have a lovely weekend.